Hi, and thanks for joining the SJ Child Show. The SJ Child Show brings value to families through education and resources. But the SJ Child Show isn't just about me. It's about us as a community. Join me as we help educate and support our community, help bring kindness and love and inclusion to all. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen and watch. I really appreciate all the support from all of the viewers and listeners. And I just want to let you know, I want you to join me on this journey. Come and follow my social media and let's do this together. Enjoy the show. Hi, and welcome to the SJ Child Show. I'm your host, SJ Child, and today I have Kim Hayden. She is a multi award winner author and has these amazing series, the Resilience series that we will be touching on today. But even more than that, her story, her authenticity, and just the amazing genuine genuine person that she is. I'm honored to have you here today, Kim. Thank you so much for being here. I am super excited SJ. And I, you know what, like I, like I said, I love that sign behind it actually really reflects who you are. Oh, just kind of that, you. that you got this warm vibe to you, like this relaxed, warm vibe. I love so that. I'm super uh, excited to be here. Thank you. And I I appreciate you saying that because I would hope that all of my guests could feel that same way. I was speaking to a gentleman in the UK yesterday and I told him ahead of time, you know, um, don't, he has several palsy and I said, don't be too nervous. We'll just be, it's very organic. And I said, you know, out of all of the podcasts I've done, there's maybe three that I have known prior to doing a podcast. And it's this genuine making a friend connection that is captured and how beautiful and amazing is that to be able to share? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so much fun. So I'm really interested in, you know, telling your story and kind of where you got started from. Tell us about yourself and in your introduction. Oh, this is a long story. Let's actually (laughs) condense this down to the cliff notes. Okay. So my name's Kim Hayden, but I was born Kim McFadden, Wichita, Kansas in the eldest of four children. Um, We were all born with the same bleeding disorder, which we did not discover until later in life, which is kind of interesting. But we also uh, came through uh, severe trauma. So my father is, uh, uh, he is a predator in the United States. So that's not a good thing. I have an amazing mom. Mm -hmm. So from my mother, I learned some incredible lessons like poverty is a state of mind, Kimberly. So, you know, sit up straight, button your shirt up, get out there and make it happen. Nothing's going to stop me. Um, From there, I uh, ended up uh, dropping out of high school in 10th grade because somebody had to help help the family. And I just wasn't really cut out for uh, school with all the issues that I had growing up and then also being ADHD. Um, so I ended up going to hair school. So, Hey folks, guess what? You have just met a girl from a trailer park at a hairdresser from Kansas. <laughs> Come on. You know, if anything was set me up for an episode of like, I don't know the, the Ozarks, um, <laughs> that right there does it. I so it. I, uh, when I, I got married at 18, divorced at 20, had a baby at 20 and decided I needed, I could not financially, I didn't want to end up on welfare. So I picked up that baby and I moved to Las Vegas and got a job waiting tables in a union facility. The Mirage was union at the time. So an excellent medical, I had excellent working environment. I had excellent pay. And then I met my husband, who is the true love of my life Mm. and ended up in Canada. And in Canada, my husband, he sat there and I, I, I had a really, it was a heavy decision marrying somebody who was educated and smart and had a good job and in a foreign country and said, you know, I'm willing to take you and your kid on. And, you know, I'd like you to be my wife and all I could sit here. And he goes, but I'm only doing this once. I all, and I'm just sitting there going, I'm going to ruin this person's life because ah. at 24, you have all this baggage. Right. And next thing you know, I end up in Canada because I shared everything with him. And he, you know what he said, and I bet you can relate to this SJ. He said, you're a diamond in the rough. You're just waiting to shine. 
and he saw that in me and he's been my greatest uh, uh, supporter all along. So in our journey of Canada, we moved to Canada or he's from Canada. So we come across, I didn't know Canada was here, by the way, I had to be convinced because I thought this was all Alaska up here. (laughs) So we're here and my husband's like, you know, I just told him, I said, I don't think I'm a very good at home mom when we had our first child together and he adopted the oldest child and said, I I need to do something. And he goes, you should go into real estate. It looks easy. And that's going to go onto a t-shirt because um, (laughs) that was real estate's not easy. It's very multifaceted, but you know, uh, number one real estate award-winning agent. We ended up uh, getting civ- civic awards and, and mm-hmm. national awards for our community service and community support and fundraising that we did in alignment with our real estate. Um, and then that's brought me full circle in the last seven years, moving into the production world, uh, doing red carpets, doing all of that. And that now leads me to the resilient series in the last three years, developing the resilient series, knowing that resilience is what we all need. And this is before the pandemic set on. This is actually, I have it tattooed. How I do noticed you, that. Yeah. Where is that? <laughs> How there we, we go. It? There you are. There it is. It's oh. on my right hand. Cause I'm right-handed to when I write, I see that no matter what's that. going on in my world, I see it. It's right in my face. Um, And so the resilience series came, it was birthed from knowing I'm not alone. I am not unique. I know that there are gazillions of women out there that have had trauma orange origins, have had challenging marriages, have had challenge challenges with their children that are seeking to be paid better. Because the average, the average pay in the United States for a woman is $15 an hour. You cannot raise children on that. And if you are not blessed with a good partnership where you have two incomes, you're in a big world of hurt. Yeah. And then I found out that, that resilience is a key part of all of this, being able to move through. And then when I started doing my research and talking to actual business coaches who work with a lot of women and we found out credibility, confidence, and relevancy are the three things that are holding them back. So I developed my, uh, my authority accelerator, which is assets that if you are not feeling confident and credible on your own, my assets that I produced for you and I show you where to stick those in are going to give you the exoskeleton, the armor you need while you build up the strength inside. Yeah. It's the same reason we do our hair and we put our lipstick on. It makes us feel better. Yeah. And so that's what I do. So that, that literally there was that, that was, the I love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's been a crazy, crazy journey and I am so blessed. And I know that, and I have been literally over the last three years breaking down. How did I make a quarter of a million? How did I make a million dollars when the average real estate agent in North America makes $43,000 a year? Mm. Why am I five, 10, you know, 20 times that what's different about me? Because I am not unique. I am you. I am every other woman out there. So what is, what is the difference? And all I did was just breaking that formula down. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. And I love the different topics that you cover because it is one thing to go through, um, a divorce. I noticed you had that one on there for, you know, helping women go through divorce, because just like you, I was married at an early age, divorced at an early age, didn't have any children with him. Haven't talked to him in 25 plus years, but boy, did I take from that and kept so much damage and trauma and things that had occurred that wasn't until, you know, years into my happy, wonderful marriage that I'm like, why am I crying about something that I, you know, hadn't dealt with for so, so long ago. So I think that it's beautiful that you wrap these, uh, that, like you said, like an exoskeleton, you give these women this safety net to fall into, to help build themselves back up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 
Um, I think one of my favorite lines in the series of books was Jack Canfield's Chicken Soup for the Soul. Love it. And that is actually this the inspiration for the Resilient series. It's it's finding the stories, the raw and real stories, and yeah. putting them in a resilient lens. Um, so the book series this year we will we are launching um, Life After Divorce Resilient. So Resilient Women Life After Divorce Resilient Women in Business. Resilient women, mompreneurs, uh, resilient women in real estate, yeah. uh, uh, resilient women, success after 40. And we do have our sixth one that we have. We're just tweaking right now, trying to figure out the exact messaging we want in that. I know it's going to be around wealth oh, nice. because it's too many women are 70 years old eating cat food. And I want to take the 45 year old women and give them insight as to what are the ways to create wealth? What are the ways to navigate or leverage your own personal wealth? Mm -hmm. So that's to me, a a really important one. And and these books, we, we, it's, it's books, um, documentary, video documentaries, uh, and then we do the associated summits. So we, we create a holistic, um, uh, movement for their story and for their expertise. But we have everybody from, from practitioners to, uh, coaches to people who are just sharing their life story. Um, people who have online courses and programs that are specific to that niche topic. And, uh, at the end of the day though, there there's, there, you know, two to 4,000 words is, basically who they are, what they're doing, um, how they help others, Mm -hmm. uh, a story of how, what that ended up looking like. So a lot of times a case study, uh, and then, um, closing it out as to how to be a further service. So, you know, it's really bringing that and making it, um, we're, we're taking it from the, the very top shelf where you need to get a ladder and associate and we're bringing it down to where it's, you know, that eye level. So you yeah. can see it, touch it, feel it and learn from accessible to everyone. I agree. accessible. That's exactly. Yeah. And I love that because I think that there is so much to be said for learning through anecdotal stories. You know, I think that when you hear somebody's story that, you know, just like you has grown up in a more poverty level, you know, and myself as well. And then seen different side of life, which was always strange for me to go back and forth to one to the other. And I, of course I carried the higher, you know, <laughs> class of life with me, um, because that's what you want to achieve. And you, if you, once you've tasted that, like you, you definitely want to keep doing that, but, um, Being able to navigate that as a mother, as a woman, um, like you said, there are are key components to that. Number one, self-confidence, I'm sure. Um, Having a partner or if you are doing it on your own, what kind of um, advice do you give women who might be doing it on their own as single moms? Oh, man. First of all, I want to say that we need a international global day for single moms because, you know, you're doing it all like, and I was there for four years and that, I think that's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I would say that single moms tend to not practice the air airplane message, which is put your oxygen mask on first. Mm -hmm. There's so much shame and guilt they carry around that it actually erodes the energy they could put into positivity. Um, You are not single because you're bad. You are not hurting your child because the space of which they're growing in is the only space they will know. You are not less than anybody else. And you are allowed to ask for help. You are allowed and encourage to reach out and make space. It does not mean that you're failing. It means that you are a success because you successfully scope the situation and you reach out and say, okay, hmm, I can't do this over here and do the volunteering. I need to offload one or the other. Yeah. And sometimes you can't do the volunteering at your child's school. 
open up that opportunity to the best friend or the auntie, somebody that you trust and say, you know what? I really think this would mean a lot to my child. Would you be open? I know that you have Thursdays off. I need to pick up this extra shift. And you do that without shame. You do that without guilt. The mother's guilt thing is enough to cripple anybody. Mm -hmm. And I think single moms to carry an extra layer of it. Mm -hmm. I agree. No. And I hope that, you know, they can hear your, you know, compassion for them. And I just know that there are so many resources. You just have to reach out and get them. You have to open that Google bar and type in those words to help you find those, those resources that you need, whether it's a group that you join or, um, a church affiliation, whatever, you know, you're comfortable with in your own community. Those are the types of, of lifting you up and being able to really help you feel like, okay, I can get things done. I can breathe. Yeah. Definitely. That would be the big one. Breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Breathing. Right. right. And that kind of, you know, single moms are incredible and hats off to them a hundred percent. And you're right. There should be an, a day just celebrating that. What about, um, like you said, those 40 to 60 year olds that are just in their, you know, prime in their mid, I don't know what prime in their mid life oh, right there. Prime baby. Uh, I'm I like in my it. prime. I, I think so I think I'm so. in my prime. <laughs> and what kind of advice do you give them to kind of maybe to start living again? I mean, maybe those who have worked the same job for 20, 30 years, how do you yep. give them, what kind of advice do you, how do you push them out of the nest? That's actually an interesting phenomena that we're actually seeing globally. And I think in part due to the pandemic, we're starting to see women who uh, have been corporate and the corporate security that are sitting here going, hmm, this isn't the right fit anymore, right? So I think a lot of women in their 40s, they start going through these shifts, right? Uh, I would say more like late 40s, early 50s, huge shifts, because now their children are fully autonomous. Their children are on their own. So that part of their identity is now gone, right? Yeah. And what you were probably getting that fulfillment piece, maybe is that's not there to make the corporate job worthwhile. Mm-hmm. So my suggestion is, is to get a journal, just any journal, just anything you have Love sitting it. around, right? Get a journal and, and Keep it with you. Keep it with you for 90 days. And every time you have a conversation with somebody, you impart a piece of wisdom. I want you to write that down. Start tracking. What is the wisdom, those gems that you're dropping every day? Mm-hmm. And the end of that 90 days, you will probably have a course that you could put <laughs> lock and load online. Because if you're already out and doing something, you might as well start looking at what are the alternatives. We are moving and shifting into an entirely different world. Yeah. And the gems and information, the survival techniques that you had dealing with a, a, you know, four-year-old obstinate child um, and getting them out of the car into the daycare or out of the car into the preschool and getting to work on time uh, or dealing with, in my case, um, my middle child uh, was diagnosed at seven with ODD and ADHD and, 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 uh, Oh God, he had another couple of D's in there. He had everything. And, and so our lives quickly shifted to 5 a.m. swim practices and to twice a week family counseling. And to, I had to learn how to talk to this child, right? Because it wasn't the same language I used for everybody else in my world. 100%. And now what do you do with that energy? My yeah. brain hasn't stopped. I will, I will grant that at 52, my one knee is starting to give me some problems. It's, I I will admit it. (laughs) I will admit it. However, my brain's not slowing down. In fact, it's some days it just feels like it's even more because I have so many more life experiences. So I would suggest to do a 90 day journal. Every time you drop a gem, 
yeah. record it, keep yeah. that on you. And then go back and review. I will guarantee you, you'll read something and go, oh my God, did I say that? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. start filling out those gems. Mm-hmm. And then what can, what is marketable and what can you share? Because the reality is, is we have all the technology, the world has shifted mm-hmm. due to COVID and it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's the yeah. thing that can allow us to escape the confines of being restricted by what we were told was a traditional option yeah. and start shifting into our own space. And not, and this yeah. may not work for everybody. This type of method works for women like yourself who are already stepping outside and hosting yeah. a podcast, women who are already stepping into leadership and volunteering and things like that within their local market, but need to know or figure out how to go next level. Where is the money? What are the opportunities within that? I love that. And you that's, know, yeah. I was just going to say, I always um, kind of interject too with journaling. I love that because today, just like you said, you, you don't have to use pen and paper. If you don't want to you put it on your phone, voice, text it, make a song out of it, make a Canva, make a, you know, there's so many ways that we can make a vision board. You know, I have all of my, oh, I think you're going to love this and laugh a little. And I don't even know how many sh- I've shared this, but I was making my vision board and my l- sweet, lovely husband was helping me cut out all of the magazine pictures. I, you know, s- tore the pages out. I like, want this one. I want this one. I want this one. I want this one. And so I was on a zoom with other gals. We were putting our vision boards together. And all of a sudden I look down and there is Shakira bent over a yoga ball, um, her head cut off just a bikini and, you know, the yoga ball. And I am dying laughing because now I know this is my husband's vision board vision, you know, is this, and just the fact that it, it's so much fun. It doesn't have to be like dreadful or planning your goals out. But even the fact that he did something so silly like that, I mean, it just made the whole evening just a blast, oh, too fun. a too blast. Fun. And then now they're joking with me all the time about it, you know, and I think, it, oh gosh, I, if I wish I could have seen his face when he heard me start laughing about that, you know? <laughs> oh, too fun. And you know, the, it, that's fun in the humor within our goals, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's amazing if you can drop the shame and the guilt, how yes. much room you have for love and fun yes. and, and that laughter. Yeah. It's amazing. Once, once that gets cleared out, how much more room you have. Yeah. Well, and it's amazing when you can ask your children, like when we're out of the room or something, you know, when dad and I are hanging out, what do you, what's your kind of outlook? I asked my 10 year old, how do you think? think about the house. Like, what do you feel is like the feeling in the, in the house? And I said, would you say it's like, we argue or we laugh a lot or what? She said, oh, you guys are always laughing. And I was so glad to hear that because to be able to reflect on a childhood where your home was full of love and laughter is the best gift. One of the best gifts that I can give my children to experience. Absolutely. So exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and now you're a mom and you've made all of this success and being a mom as well. So tell us about, um, you know, what that was like kind of getting out of that, like you said, the momness and saying, okay, I'm, this is what I'm going to do next. Um, well, it's been an interesting journey over the last three years. First thing is you have to let go of all the woulda, coulda, shouldas now that my children are adults. Yes. I wish I'd done this differently. I wish I'd done that differently and realize that my children are the adults because of what I did and did not do. Yeah. Um, now my kids are my biggest advocates for what I'm doing. In fact, my middle child is working with me. He runs the actual technical that. production side. Um, my oldest is, uh, I'm very proud of him. My oldest has really struggled and this is part of, part of being a young mom. For those of you out there that are young moms and I was a 20 year old, completely ill-equipped to have a child. And my oldest child was, uh, born. He has, we found out when he was 16, that he has a cognitive learning challenge that's directly related to a cyst in his brain. And so 
I never quite understood why he couldn't read when he is so bloody smart. Like this guy, his sequential spacing and everything, like his spacing, understanding, his spatial relationships and stuff. Off the chart. The guy is just brilliant. Um, but he couldn't sequence the read. And it would make me so angry and frustrated because I felt that that was my failing. Yeah. And the reality is, I first of all, I should have asked for an MRI because we found out what the problem was with an MRI. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I look at my children yeah, now. Really. Yeah, I look at my children now and it's like, okay, they're on their own journey. Um, what's my next journey? Because I ain't stopping. Because <laughs> I mean, Betty White retired and she passed away like what? 48 hours later, you know, like she should have never retired. She should have never retired. I mean, oh God, Betty White, like she's my idol. She's my idol. I love Betty White, but we look at old other, other people, George Burns worked until the day. So yeah, you're going to be doing something. Yeah. Cause you don't want to do nothing. Right. So that's just reinventing. But my oldest child will tell you if anybody can do it, mom can do it. And he is like my biggest, he's like such a huge advocate. My baby, she's just like, what's mom doing now? (laughs) Magic (laughs) number what? (laughs) What? Yeah. (laughs) So poor thing. She's always along. And my kids have grown up working side by side with me. So like they would do open houses with me. They would be doing food drives with me. We would be, you know, working the community garage sale. Like we, we worked as, and my, I have to say, I am pretty proud of my children's work ethics. Um, And for those single moms out there, if, if kids got to go to work with you, or if you've got to work a Saturday, take them with you, give them a task. If there are over four, just don't claim it on your income taxes. Then you're not child labor, but you know, (laughs) there you go. (laughs) I know it's like, you don't want to get you arrested. (laughs) This is, you can't claim this, but make them feel that they're part of the journey. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Mm-hmm. So, no, I agree. In fact, I wrote children's books. We didn't even talk about any of that. I have no children's please. books um, about special needs. And I was so lucky that through that journey, my daughter created her very own book at eight years old. She said, mom, I want to illustrate my own book and I want to do something special too. And so she did her own little illustrated book that now, I mean, eight years old and has, you know, what a feat to bring with her into her future. And just the fact that she wanted to do something the same. Oh my gosh. Melted heart. Right. It just is like the most special thing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Kids, kids are, um, you know, they are the future they are. And, and, you know, you only get out what you put in. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? So why not put in the best, right? The most absolutely kindness, compassion, understanding, you know, conflict resolution, something important. Children need to learn how to, uh, you know, to, how to uh, handle themselves. Those are hard, you know, tasks. and they need to see, they need to see conflict. Children yeah. need to, I think that there's too many children right now, young adults that their parents uh, did not show any type of conflict. So they have no way to navigate. Mm-hmm. They have no way. Right. Yeah. That's really interesting. You'd say that because yeah, you would think that you, you don't want them to yeah see you be disrespectful, but seeing you in a conflict where you're working things out, mm-hmm. that's the best, right? I mean, the parents, like you said, don't feel ashamed that your child is having to view you in a bad light or whatever, but uh, see the resilience that comes out of that. Of Absolutely. What well, you take a look at people who own a bakery, family owned bakery, and their kids start working in that bakery when they're like five, six, seven, eight years old. Right. And these kids grow up. And by the time they're in their early twenties, they know how to run a business. Yeah, definitely. You know, and they, and what a gift to give your child, yeah. but the ability to actually be self-sufficient. Yes. So, 100%. so yeah. So anybody out there who due to the recession is having to pick up an extra shift or do some extra work. This is an opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, drag your yeah. six, seven, 10, 12 year old with you and, and, 
and give them a task, but also ensure that you give them a reward that you follow through with. Mm -hmm. Right. hundred percent. That follow through is so, so important in building that trust and that bond of communication with them. You know, absolutely. Hey, you know, I've, I've got mom's got to go and, you know, uh, sit in, sit in a store or something like that. So I'm going to need you to be with the sitter or something like that. But afterwards you do this for me and understand that this is what we need to do in order to survive this recession. And in return, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the ingredients and we're going to make your favorite dinner together. Love it. So just, it's just, it's all give and takes. And and don't be afraid to, I just find a lot of people are afraid to um, be real with their mm-hmm. children. Isn't that the truth? And they want to shield them from adultisms, yet they expect them to act like adults. And it is the most ridiculous thing. And I'm not saying I never did that with my first child. Yeah, I made all the mistakes, right? First children of the pancake <laughs> child. Remember, the first Remember the first pancake you make is always edible, but not quite so pretty. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you know, bless her heart that she's given us grace and understanding that the last two are very different and have been raised differently. And she doesn't fault us for that. Well, maybe inside, but we've talked to her about it enough that, you know, we've brought it out to the open and apologized for, and also said, but now that we know we can do better, sorry, we didn't know then we thought we were doing better, but now we're really doing better. So bless their hearts. Yeah, absolutely. I've had those (laughs) same conversations. I have a feeling that we parent very similarly. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You know, because I, 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 when my, so when each one of my children turned 18, because my baby is 20, um, each one turned 18 and I went to uh, we went to a neutral territory. So uh, here it was uh, the Taco Bell. I went with my oldest and I sat and explained everything. And I said, first of all, I want you to know that some of the things that I did as a child, when you were a child was not fair and you deserved a better parent because you are an amazing human being. Yeah. And let me share with you my childhood and the things that I went through and why some of those responses took place. Mm -hmm. I'm not excusing them. I'm giving a, a, a a parameter. So a basis to it. And I want you to know that I'm here to support you any way, shape or form. And that I hope that the partner you choose or, you know, things will, will give you the level of respect that you deserve as a human being. And I did, I've done that with all three of my children because I had to own my own shortcomings because, you know, I think Let me that's ask so you this. Important. Do you remember like a time where you did fall short with your children? Do yeah. You, can absolutely. you remember a specific moment and if, it replays on a lo- yeah. loop? Oh my gosh. Times? Right. Yeah. With a two-year-old yeah. that, yes, a two-year-old in a cat box, then, <laughs> then realized that, you know, he was autistic and couldn't even comprehend yeah. what he was doing. And I, yeah, I forgot, I, I forgot my daughter at uh, her summer camp. <sighs> I thought, yeah. I thought, I thought pickup was the next morning. Oh, I thought pickup was gosh. the next day. I, I was smoking so like, so smoking busy at the yeah. time. It was, my world was just crazy. And I had it in my calendar and I got the, I got the times wrong. I got the times wrong. So I get a call and they say, um, pickup was an hour and a half ago and your daughter's the only one left here at the camp. Oh. And, and I'm going, Okay, camp is two hours away. I uh, exactly right. It has so to be. It I'm like, be I'm like in my car, <laughs> lying down the highway. I've got to get to my kid. I get there. She's hanging out with all the camp counselors, having a great old there. time. Yeah, yeah, they've raided the candy store. <laughs> I love it. And they're they've taught her how to play backgammon. Oh. Eleven years old, she's learned how to play backgammon. She's gorged on sugar, and she goes, "Can you be <laughs> late every time?" Yeah, right, right. This needs to be a habit. <laughs> <laughs> oh heavens you know so, we learn so much through the innocence of our children and their experiences that they experience in the world it, it's incredible these little humans just love them so i have to tell you have you ever read um the children's book i lost the name of it good night um 
It's one with the little boy. Yeah. I love I you love today. You. I love yes. you forever. Yes. <gasps> Right where he carries her to bed at uh-huh. the end. Oh. Do you cry? Yes, Do you I cry? Could, how can you not? I can't. Even I, think I about cry it. <laughs> just thinking about yeah, it. Exactly. I cry just thinking about it. Yeah. I have to say that I we are now caring for my husband's father. We've cleaned oh. out his house. Yeah. We're moving him into a facility. Um, the honor to know that I'm able to step in and help my husband's father the way that I have, you know, get in his house, prepared to sell staging. And it's, it's, we're in a two and a half hour journey to where he was living. So, but hustling down there every other week, doing what we can, finding where the cats had made a litter box in a house. Oh, don't even go there. Yeah. And, and, but getting it ready. So this is all peace of mind, right? And this is what I can do. And I think about that book. And I think, and I watch my husband help his father get in and out of a vehicle and get his walker and go to, but like, I sit there and I look at him, I go, you're an amazing man. Seriously. Right. And all I can do is hope that we are modeling the behavior that our children will learn and adapt and they won't view us as a burden, Mm -hmm. but as a honor, right? A hundred percent. So I, yeah, I think about that. I've thought about that book a lot lately because we're now on the side where my husband's carrying his father, right? Wow. So, oh, that's such a hard transition. My 95 year old grandfather just went into an Alzheimer's unit just two weeks ago. And just the thought of, I try not to, I'm trying, don't think, don't think, right? (laughs) Um, But to, he's again, like you two hours away. And as a granddaughter, I just don't have the power that the the children have to say, no, he can come live with me or anything like that. You know, it's, it's kind of out of my hands, but it's hard to let out, let control of that and not put my opinions in or want to go and just check on him and all of these things. And just to be like, okay, faith that he's, you know, lived 95 years of an incredible it, fulfilling life and know that, you know, I spent his 95th birthday with him at, you know, at a restaurant for the first time for me for two years out of the pandemic. So it, it was almost like, you know, just such a, a moment of, uh, what needed to be exactly. And so, and yeah. now I'm just in that same, like, Well, I'm unfortunately not being able to care for him, but thinking he's, you know, always he's in my thoughts. You know what? Yeah. In the, in the, the, the facilities have far better, uh, uh, regiments to help them live healthier, longer periods. Music though, just like for our children, music for seniors is amazing. So my father-in-law, I I was asking him back in October, because we could see the decline then, um, you know, who's your favorite artist? And we start talking mm-hmm. and he starts sharing all of like around Frank Sinatra and stuff. Mm-hmm. So having that playlist. Yes. So when you go and visit the music actually triggers their memory, just mm-hmm. like, you know, children, when we do the tidy up, tidy up, everybody tidy up, let's go. So can you tell I've done one thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. This Easy mom was preschool. a Girl Scout leader. <laughs> exactly. But, but what we do is we create oh. rhythms and patterns and yeah. that is so baked in, right? Yeah. That it's yeah. literally the last thing to, that they lose that, yeah. that we lose as seniors. So Make a playlist, his favorite playlist. Go and try and figure out what, take a look. So we got my father-in-law's record collection and we went through and I found, and so we're just making a playlist to go with that. I love that. And I think that that would be so easy and, and be so, so nice to do. In fact, one of my very first um, interviews at the very beginning was a gentleman in New Jersey that works at his, it's called the key of awesome music. And he goes to Alzheimer's centers. He works with all, um, neurodiverse individuals with music. He teaches them music. He plays them music. And I mean, Oh, thank heavens for him. Right. If I can fly Absolutely. him out here. <laughs> the, all the people that volunteer at these senior facilities and the people yeah. who follow, I, I just say volunteering as uh, in general, do you know that only 29% of North American adults volunteer. 
Wow, that's, that's a statistical enough. average. No, it's not. So I encourage everybody yeah. to to even if it's just once or twice a year, find somewhere and volunteer. Mm-hmm. Um, anything, anything. It could be you know uh, rescue, rescue cats for, uh, rescuing cats from eating hard cat food, right. Yeah. Liberating them to soft, whatever it is, mm-hmm. but put something out there yeah. because that, that energy does come back. And that does actually play into a billion dollar revenue that, that goes into the, you know, United States and in Canada, but uh, most of the wow. stats that I talk about are American, um, uh, but it's the $3.1 billion is offset in our personal, in our uh, national revenue through volunteerism hours. So Amazing. we're in, again, coming back to the recession, what can you do? You know, um, you know, even for your, for yourself, like even honestly, even children's books going in with the simplicity of a child's book into a senior's home and reading. Yeah. That's volunteerism. Oh, I didn't think about that. I love that. I think you know? they would love, love that too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. And oh, don't think, don't that. think what you can do for volunteerism is too little or not enough. Um, every little, every 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour that anybody can put in is an hour that's offset by either a void or by a revenue, like a a revenue consumption, meaning that these facilities or these organizations have to pay somebody Mm -hmm. or that it's, it actually, there ends up being not a uh, service. Uh, My son's special, my son was in a school uh, for boys for four years for boys who um, uh, had behavioral challenges and uh, assimilating into a, a regular school system. And uh, so he was in the school for four years. And so I created a space. I volunteered for four years, every Thursday, teaching my son's class, seven boys ranging from ADHD to autism to Asperger's. Uh, I had uh, one of one of my boys who has uh, type of cerebral palsy at 24. I've known him for 10 years now, just helped him buy his first, buy his first house. Amazing. I love that, you know, and oh, it's, it. and this is a kid who not only has physical disabilities, but yeah. he uh, witnessed the um, death of his mother on Christmas oh, Eve goodness. when he was, he was just, 12 or 13. So I'm kind of like a surrogate mom, but if I hadn't have volunteered to teach them cooking, I taught, I, I did this every Thursday for four years. I would make these, I would have anywhere between seven and 10 or seven and nine boys. And we would teach, we would actually make an entire lunch. So that was the dish, the side dish and the dessert for the school and the kids. But the kids would purchase the tickets. They would pre-order. So it was a hot lunch. Mm -hmm. I volunteered to teach this class and the kids would order. And so we then had revenue coming into the school to offset the school supplies. Yeah. And we had a hot lunch and I taught those boys. And this one young man is just a lovely human being. Yeah. And, you know, and right. And then I'm helping him with his new house. And he goes, you'd really do this for me. And I said, Dude, you're part of the family here. Yeah. I've known you for a decade. You can't get rid of me that easy. <laughs> you're just going to take care of me when I'm old. He goes, okay, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, I just love that. And the commitments that you make out in the community with people. And you're so much like me. I feel like the more friends at the grocery store and the bank and everywhere I go, the better treatment, the better service I get. You know, I've had people pay my extra $5 that I'm short. I've had, you know, owners or grocery people bring my groceries out because I've had my kids and I'm having a hard time without question. They're like, it's Sarah, grab her stuff, take it out. You know, she's always coming in with a smile and a a wave and a hello to everyone. And it's those type of relationships you make in the community that are the payback. Like you said, they, it comes full circle. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally agree. I totally agree. 100%. I think, I think if we lived in the same neck of the woods, we'd be meeting for coffee once I a agree. week. Absolutely. I agree. And uh, you know, that's funny too. Where are you? I don't even know where you're at. I'm in Calgary, <laughs> Alberta. That where, first thing. Where, where oh, are you at? In Salt Lake city, Utah. 
Oh, you're in Utah. My son was just down there. He goes down there regularly. Okay. Um, his Snowy. friend just got married there okay. at the Tabernacle. So oh, uh, we're not Mormon, but my son's my son, most of his friends are. Okay. Calgary is actually Calgary, Boise, and, and Salt Lake are actually in the same kind of where all the kids intermix and all the families because we have such a high Mormon uh concentrate right okay that's so, so interesting yeah so wow. yeah my son was just down there for a wedding just a few weeks ago it was hopefully beautiful then yes and it's, it was it's beautiful like, you know how it goes it's now it's yeah. decided spring has hidden it's and oh yeah we're minus 16 <laughs> we're oh, minus 16 okay. here today I'll take in Calgary. 20 something my, then or 32 yeah. or whatever it might be <laughs> my feet so i have a i have a um i have a, a trick for you for cold weather I don't know if your feet get cold, like my feet get cold, my, my feet get cold. Okay. I, I have a heating pad. One of those little heating pads that you put on your belly. Yeah. Right. Because I don't, I'm old that. now and I don't need that. Uh, <laughs> that heating pad has now moved to the floor there and I go. just literally click it on and I put my feet on it. Oh, so if my feet are warm, perfect. the rest of me is warm. Then you you're getting, I know, right. I need to find them some heated socks or something. <laughs> I'm sure they have them these days, oh, yeah. right? They have oh, everything. Yeah. They have everything. This has been such a fun, inform informative and exciting conversation. And I want to in um, invite you back because uh, there's so much more we can talk about and cover. And like you said, a, like a relationship, you know, episode and things. So I'd love to have you back on. But before we finish, tell us where to go to find you and all of the good stuff. We can find those wonderful books. Awesome. It. So it's resilientseries.com. Uh, I do have a uh, podcast interviewing the women in the in the book series hey. called Kim Talks. Okay. And we'll have to get you on to Kim Talks Ooh, Resilience. We'd love so that. that's that's our Tuesday. We do that live stream Wonderful. Tuesdays at 1230 Mountain Standard Time. And that goes through um, my Kim Hayden Facebook page, my LinkedIn page underneath Kim Hayden. Um, and then we then edit it all down. It goes YouTube. Perfect. Uh, so resilient series on Instagram, uh, Kim Hayden or resilient women on Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn is Kim Hayden. And at the end of the day, just visit my website, lots of stuff on there. Yeah. Uh, there's different freebies. If you right, we have, oh, we have a free here for anybody who's listening. You, if you are female, you can go to resilientgift.com and you'll get six months free to our membership. So wow. anything, I, anything I develop, put in there uh, today, we're actually just finishing our community expert webinar, and that's going to be cool. dropped in there totally free of charge. Um, but yeah, do take advantage of that. Okay. And again, it's resilientgift.com. Oh, wonderful. And I'll make sure to have all that text up on the screen and down in the description box below for all you wonderful viewers and listeners. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for your diligence and your resilience in just the amazing service that you are providing to the world. Thank you, Kim. Awesome. And everybody be sure that you like, subscribe, comment, and share the SJ Child Show because this woman right. definitely deserves it. Oh, thank you so much. It's such an honor to have you on today. And I am excited to stay connected. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, and thanks for joining the SJ Child Show. The SJ Child Show brings value to families through education and resources. But the SJ Child Show isn't just about me. It's about us as a community. Join me as we help educate and support our community, help bring kindness and love and inclusion to all. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen and watch. I really appreciate all the support from all of the viewers and listeners. And I just want to let you know, I want you to join me on this journey. Come and follow my social media and let's do this together. Enjoy the show. Introducing Autism Vehicle Home Safety Kits, Emergency Responder, Alert Stickers, Personal Profiles with Autism Needs and a Communication Board, Masks and Earplugs, Keeping Families and Emergency Responders Educated and Safe. Get yours today at sjchilds.org. 
helping autism families impact their child's developmental milestones through home relocation, community resources, and home designs. For every three homes Natalie Castro sells, she funds and designs a sensory room for a community center servicing individuals with autism. She volunteers to coach law enforcement, first responders, and ER nurses how to have a positive experience for individuals on the autism spectrum. The SG Child Show, produced by SG Childs LLC. Thanks to all my viewers and listeners for your continued love and support. And thank you to the guests of the SJ Child Show. It's been an honor to have you on the show. Thank you to everyone who continues to support me. Go to my social media and let's build this community together through kindness, compassion, and education for others.